Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. You already know, today we have a lot to talk about regarding XRP as a start, but also Gary Gensler and crypto regulations. It's an interesting episode, so make sure you press the like button if you want to support the channel and, well, I mean, we post crypto updates every single day, so do not forget to subscribe. Here's everything you need to know about XRP's chances of hitting $3. Now, I want to make this thing very freaking clear. Articles like this very often have nothing to give you. And this one, nonetheless. I read through it now. I read through it twice because in one of my botched video attempts, you're actually already read through it in the video. I decided it's not important enough because there's literally nothing here except for this little line. Of the total inflow into digital assets, 233 million specifically in the last week, 33 million was directed towards XRP. I must say that is interesting to understand. Yeah, that is an interesting little, little number to have, but in the end, it says nothing without the further context, which I do not have. So what are the chances of hitting $3 per XRP again? I have personally said in my head, it's about a 98% chance maybe. So. I'm, I'm now I'm going to say 98%. And that is kind of built up on, okay, 80% chance that Ripple is going to win. The, no, I'm going to say it's even higher than that. But let's say 80% chance that Ripple is going to win the lawsuit as a baseline. And there's basically another part of this probability that XRP's price is just going to hit that purely because of advancements within this lawsuit or because the lawsuit takes such a long time that Ripple just comes out with some crazy utility announcements and we still hit it earlier. All that is actually possible. It is basically just doubling from right now. A little bit more than doubling since we right now are at about $1.30. But let's say about doubling from now, it is not that hard, even if the lawsuit is still going on. But then again, if they fix this lawsuit, the chance is about 99.9999% strong that they're actually going to beat $3 very, very quickly. And so once more, 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh, the chance of hitting $3 is extremely, extremely high in my opinion. The only question... And a very important one as well is when, because that we do not have any answer to. That's a really difficult question. I personally think all of this is a marathon, not a sprint. But that again brings us to the point of the next article, buying XRP as it gets ready to turn bullish. This article basically says we found some support at the 20, D or 20 daily e uh, SMA, not the EMA. And... I can only say in this case here, I think XRP is following Bitcoin. You have now seen two of my videos here one live stream and one video where I explain how bullish I am on crypto, how bullish I am on XRP and how I think things will really pop off. But then again, that's always a little bit of a bet, right? I've also explained, as I always do, the downsides to all of these things and what could happen to get us to the opposite direction of where we'd want to go. I think it is of freaking significant, no, it's, of, it's imperative, let's put it like that, that people update you on both sides of the story. And that is always what I'm like to do in my videos here. Give you guys really both sides, right? Give you really, what are the chances to go up? What are the chances to go down? And if you're honestly asking me, should I buy XRP here? All I can say is, well, if you think crypto is not dead altogether for the next couple of months, if you don't think the bearish run is about to come on here, then I think that's a very good thing to do. Because it's basically making a little bit of a bottom for itself. And I don't think it's going to go that much lower unless Bitcoin actually comes in and stomps itself to the ground. Which basically means Bitcoin making a lower low. Now XRP, however, has a little bit of a, of a range here. For example, if it hits these levels again, it is even not that crazy. At least I would personally say it's not that crazy. And it's quite interesting how on this chart, XP actually went to the bottom. Maybe somebody bought the whole entire uh, or sold the whole entire order book out. That could actually be kind of interesting how that went. That is pretty damn funny. That is pretty funny. Okay, so let's move on though. We have more stuff to talk about. Ethereum fees reached one. Oh no, let's actually, let's say me one more thing. Let me say one more thing. It is really funny how people are often asking me, Dusty, should I buy XRP at spots like this at the top? And Dusty, should I sell XRP at st stops like this at the bottom? You saw it just right now where XP was pumping early today in the live stream. We were covering that. And people are all massively asking me, should I buy now? Should I buy now? Should I buy now? If you are a guy who buys the top, yeah, then uh, I don't know what to say, man. It's, it's, this might they might not be your game. I personally like to trade a lot over on Bybit, as you guys most likely already know. I do most mostly inverse perpetuals with XRP, but I also sometimes just trade some other coins if I feel like it. There's quite a lot of coins you can clearly see over in here. I like it a lot. Again, my own personal um, opinion. But then again, it might not be everybody's game. All right. What I do know, however, is Ethereum 
freaking stupid ass fees. Stupid it is. Really freaking stupid. I wanted to send $30 worth of ETH for something. Or $40, I don't remember. $50 to send some money. Come on. What is this, right? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. But then again, like I explained in the live stream, it's really hard to compete with Ethereum right now. They really are top class. Um, and there's no real competitor. You might say Dusty, but Binance Smart Chain or Dusty Cardano or Dusty um, uh, Polkadot, they're all coming up. Yes, they are. But they're not anywhere close to getting to the top. And even though the Binance Smart Chain has so much volume on there, it's so big already, the Binance Smart Chain, I would say, is for a good part also just, quote, unquote, better because it's cheaper, but that is also because it's centralized. You know, literally. They, they they just admit it themselves. Centralized, decentralized finance is what they call it because they know. And it's elaborate. Uh, sorry, guys. It's deliberate. And I personally don't know exactly what to think about it. It's like, uh, it's a 50-50. You know, have better, cheaper costs for being very centralized. And XRP, a lot of people call it centralized, but it's not. It really isn't. XRP fees are still $0.00001 per transaction. It's really a big difference though, guys. I Every time I want to send some money, I send XRP nowadays. The only problem is I don't like to sell XRP. So it's only very occasionally that I like to uh, send it away. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do some shady stuff to get myself more XRP in return. Because if you're sending it away, you don't have it anymore, right? Now, Digital Asset Buy posted Gary Gensler was confirmed on April 14th. He could have dropped the case on day one. He did not. This is now Gary Gensler's SEC versus Ripple. And the only thing I can say here is, is completely right. Then again, what were we expecting? It is not completely true in the sense somebody says it's a false statement. I personally think the only thing he could have said is um, that Gary Gensler, of course, right now does not really have power just quite yet. He's still getting in there. He also cannot drop the case on his own. So, I mean, a lot of this doesn't really make sense in the real world. But then again, I don't really think Gary Gensler is going to come in like he has already and just say, you know what, let's drop it. In the end, I don't think Ripple would want that anyway. A dropping of the case is something which can happen, but there's such a small chance of it. And I think Ripple right now just wants either a partial settlement or to let the judge decide what the ruling is going to be. If it's going to be dropped, you're basically going to start out from square one again, where you're going to have to go through all the process again, spend millions of dollars again, maybe in, in, in fees, basically. I don't think that would be what they'd want. Phil says, so you think GG, Gary Gensler, would decide on day one without knowing all the details of the case. It will take weeks at least before he says anything about it, which I firmly agree with as well. It's it's really strange that um, that he would just go on day one and say everything. Somebody says he knows everything before taking the position. This man's not an idiot, but I still disagree though. I still think he has to really read in, of course, solidify his position as well, and then let go either of a verdict or not even, because it could also be he's going to leave himself outside and just work on a proper uh, cryptocurrency framework. Then again, Brad Gollinghouse's interview, which we recently covered in there, it was also stated that Brad Gollinghouse thinks Gary Gensler could be the guy to make this all happen. And he also thinks that their only option uh, don't quote me directly on this one, but their only option is basically either a partial settlement with the SEC, which again, Gary Gensler could help with, or to the judge decide, which is again, just versus Gary Gensler. SEC accuses Ripple of harassment, asks judge to block access to some discovery records. Just a lot of people are sharing this article with me saying, Dusty, have you seen this? Yes, we have seen this. Yes, we have covered this in the video before. It is basically that Ripple is acquiring a lot of information from the SEC, which they were granted by the judge, and the SEC is now saying that the Ripple is harassing them and asking for too much, which again, a new um, dot, new, new discussion basically is going to come around on the 28th of April. Then SEC names Director of Enforcement as fight with Ripple continues. Veteran lawyer Alex O has been appointed to the SEC's top investigative post. I really do not know if this is interesting whatsoever for XRP. At all. I just thought, hey, let me quickly mention it, right? Let me quickly mention that this is going on. New member of the SEC. Let leave, let's leave it for what it is. Once more, guys, Bybit is the platform I'm trading on. Just wanted to quickly give it a little more shout out. It's the platform I'm using right now, and I still love it like a charm. Then Gary Gensler takes over at the SEC, but there's little reprieve for Ripple. Now, I this might actually be posted because of DAI. It might just be another... I'm, I'm not exactly sure why John here posted this. The SEC new chairman, Gary Gensler, took office a few days ago, but while some XRP holders were hopeful he would bring more lenient perspective into the Ripple case, it is a business as usual. Following his announcement, the House of Congress has passed a bill that could lead to clarity for the SEC and CFTC in what is brewing battle between the regulator and the crypto industry. So, I also have seen a big debate about people saying Gary Gensler wants 
to regulate the F out of crypto instead of making it you know, more accessible. But then again, he's teaching blockchain technology. I think regulating it in this case here would also be him knowing what exactly crypto is good for and why it would have to be there. I personally think a lot of these things, a lot of these projects out there are not securities as long as they've got use case, but a lot of them are. You know, to be honest, Ethereum in the past was a security. XP in the past, you might definitely say so, was also a security. But the question is, are they now? And there should be some kind of middle phase here where it's like, if you do not become, you know, completely kind of independent within one year of operating, boom, your security, boom, you get fined, boom, everything like that, right? Whereas basically, well, you've been warned, if you go and attempt something like that, you're going to be messed up if you don't fix it or if you don't have a proper plan to get out of the security phase because launching a crypto without being a security is quite difficult if you're going to do that from the start ethereum for example had that pre-sale which boom instantly makes us a security so the only option then is to actually file with the sec but that again admits that you're going to stay a security right because otherwise how are you going to go from being a security to not a security that is also strange so it's a little bit of a difficult debacle i don't know how they're going to regulate it but it's a discussion for the 28th as well if ripple has been overreaching with their documents everything there's just more updates coming up throughout the next couple of days and tonight again most likely like right around now uh i'm not exactly sure actually when you might have actually already received the documents well but right now the sc is bringing up their motion to strike as you most likely have heard then uh let's quickly see here Next article, Ripple open to burning nearly 50 billion XRP locked in escrow. CEO Brad Garlinghouse. Ripple has been in the news for some undesired reasons as of late. It is all talking about this, right? It is all talking about escrow, all talking about regulation, all talking about Gary Gensler. It's all kind of the same thing. A lot of it is referring back to the interview that Brad Garlinghouse had. Well, I think they're taking it out of context a little bit. Ripple open to burning nearly 50 billion XRP. Well, even though they are, it's a little bit of a wrong narrative that they're putting onto this. I've said that before over in my video a couple of um, I don't know it's yesterday because the interview was yesterday. They are open to it, yes, but they basically just said as to the escrow, if you guys have any ideas, you can let us know. But it's not like Ripple can just burn it all out of themselves, right? They're going to either have to, if they really want to, wait um, a couple of years to be able to do that, where they just get all the escrow, keep it, and then burn it or something like that. They could, but that would take years. If they wanted to burn all the escrow all of a sudden, the Ripple couldn't do that themselves. It's the XRP community who has the power to do that. Could Ripple pull a couple of strings? Well, maybe a couple, but they wouldn't nearly get enough because you need 80% to actually get something like that going. They wouldn't get nearly enough support to be able to do that on their own. Then here's how many Americans know about XRP, Cardano, and Chainlink. Just a little fun metric. More crypto curious Americans know about Chainlink than about XRP and Cardano, which I think is very big BS. Very big BS. Very, very, very big BS. I think, really, that there's so many people in the US that know about XRP. Nah, I don't buy into this at all. They're saying right here 95% Bitcoin, 38% Ethereum, 24% Bitcoin Cash, 16% Litecoin, 11% Tether, uh, Tether. 8% Chainlink and 6% XRP. I think there's more people that know about XRP than they know about Tether. Just personally going to quickly put that up here. I, I can't imagine more people know about Chainlink in the US than about XRP. That to me sounds like the dumbest thing in a very long while. I just, I can't. Uh, the average household income of the crypto hodlers is uh, 111,000, by the way. The majority of American crypto holders are white, 71%. I don't know how skewed this little research is. Um... I haven't actually checked that part out. I just saw the bottom here. Let's quickly see if we have any info on what type of sample they took or how they put this up for the entire population. Unsurprisingly, a whopping 95% of the U.S. adults have heard about Bitcoin. Where are, where? okay, new report here, published by Gemini. Let's quickly check this out, guys. Let's see. Okay, yeah, there we go. New data from Gemini's survey of 3,000 investors and crypto curious consumers in the U.S., so most likely this was quite biased. I'm going to quickly say that right here. Um, this is not a proper poll for the entire crypto realm. But again, let's quickly see here. Survey respondents were polled from October 2000, uh, October 19th to November 16, 2020. Once more, this is before a lot or a really big part of the big surge as well. And included 921 self-identifying cryptocurrency owners and 1,697 consumers who were interested in learning about or about crypto. So yeah, this is this this has no real purpose for you, if you ask me. Also, Gemini, yeah, I don't even know if they have any XRP on there, if it's even listed at all, or even was listed ever. I would personally have no idea. So if it's really kind of done on their exchange, for example, all these guys, 
yeah, then the, the results are always going to be, you know, changing quite uh, a lot. Here again, the average age of their, again, their sample, 38 years old, average age of curious investors, 44. Curious investors gender breakdown, 47 men, 53 women. Okay, that is also interesting. It is interesting to look at it, don't get me wrong. Even the report could be cool. As again, you guys might know my background and what I like to do in terms of analysis, but huh, it is uh, something we're not going to get into much, too much today. You know? And then cryptocurrency exchange BitTrue exceeds 4 million registered users as XRP trades at multi-year high. I'm going to make a video pretty soon here on where you can buy XRP in the United States or maybe at different places around the world as well. It's going to be coming up, so you know, once more, press the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. For right now, BitTrue is the one I'm using mostly for my XRP purchases. In the US, it is also available, but you cannot do KYC in the US. So make sure you check it out really quickly because they changed that recently. So check it out for yourself. Uh, BitTrue, a link is down below. You're helping me out by using that link. That is all. And I'll see you guys again. I don't know what to say in another video.